Good morning, church, and welcome to worship. We are so glad you could join us this morning. My name is Pastor Katie, and I would like to take a moment to introduce you to my colleagues. We have Pastor Matt, Pastor Kim, Pastor Andrea, Pastor Matt, Pastor Curtis, Pastor Jackie, and Pastor Heather. And if you are watching on Facebook, then we encourage you to host a watch party so that others may join us too. Otherwise, after the service is over, be sure to share the video to help us connect with those people outside of our congregations. Also, be sure to leave us a like or a comment or some other reaction so we know who we are worshiping with today. And if you're watching this on a YouTube channel, maybe subscribe to your church's YouTube channel. We would like to take a moment to thank those who continue to give to their churches during this time that we are a part. We did encourage you to share your offering gifts uh, via the options your local church has made available, both by mail and electronically. One last reminder, be sure to check your local church's Facebook page and your email for updates and opportunities to connect during the week. And so today we continue with week four of our May series, Closer and Closer. So again, welcome to worship. As we gather to worship this Memorial Day weekend, let us begin with a call to worship. On this day of memory, we gather to sing and to pray. We remember the past and look to the future. On this day when the guns once fell silent, we come before you, God, seeking your peace. On this day of hope in the face of terror, we come before you, God, praying with all our hearts. God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, help us to find the path that leads to the peaceable kingdom. Open our eyes and the eyes of the nations to find a different path to the disagreements of life in this world. In this time of story, song, and prayer, may we be recommitted to being people of peace, true peace. May we catch a vision of how the world could live together. And so we echo the old prayers. Make us channels of your peace. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with us. Where are you now when darkness seems to win? Where are you now when the world is crumbling? Oh, I, I, I hear you say, I hear you say, look up, child. Yeah, look up, child. Yeah, look up. Yeah, look up, child. Yeah, where are you now when all I feel is down? Where are you now when I can't figure it out? Oh, I. I, I hear you say, I hear you say, look up, child, hey, look up, child, hey, look up, child, hey, look up, child, yeah, you're not threatened by the not shaken by the storm. I know you're in control. Even in our suffering, even when it can't be seen, I know you're in control. Oh, I, I, I hear you. 
you say, I hear you say, look up, child. Yeah, look up, child. Yeah, look up, child. Yeah, look up, child. Yeah, look up, child. Lord of dawn and darkness, how grateful we are for your loving mercies. You saw our fear and doubt, our suspicion, our mistrust, and you banished them from our lives, replacing them with hope, peace, love, and joy. You called us to be your witnesses to all the world, unafraid of what others might think or say about us. We have been invited out of our darkened hideaways into the light of your world as emissaries of hope and justice, peace and compassion. Be with us as we participate in ministries of healing and hope through this church, through our community, region, nation, and world. Give us courage and strength to be your disciples in the circumstances of our lives. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our scripture this morning is Acts chapter 1, verses 6 to 14, and I'm reading from the Common English Bible. As a result, those who had gathered together asked Jesus, Lord, are you going to restore the kingdom to Israel now? Jesus replied, it isn't for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has set by his own authority. Rather, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. After Jesus said these things, as they were watching, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going away, and as they were staring toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood next to them. They said, Galileans, why are you standing here looking toward heaven? This Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way that you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they, and when they entered the city, they went to the upstairs room where they were staying. Peter, John, James, and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, Alphaeus' son, Simon the Zealot, and Judas, James' son, all were united in their devotion in prayer along with some women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Andrea, for that reading of your word. I'd like to begin this discussion by saying an invitation of, please have your scripture open or on your phone or a screen somewhere and follow along in Acts chapter 1 uh, as we open up these scriptures. To get us started today talking about this present and, and our Holy Spirit, we're going to have a, a story from the other pastor, Matt, is going to share... Mm -hmm a little bit to help us relate and delve into the scripture so we can begin this discussion. Well, thank you. Uh, so I'm currently reading a book called uh, Becoming Better Grown Ups, and it's written by an author of the name Brad Montague. And uh, in this introduction to the book, he talks about inheriting these, um, these gifts and this knowledge of becoming an adult so that when we reach the age of becoming adults, uh, we, we are bestowed these things like uh, an understanding of all the tax laws, um, mm -hmm. how to handle certain situations in life that we, we, we come across as adults, and then realizes that when he graduates that he's not received his adulthood powers yet. And that when he gets to college and graduates, he still hasn't received them and wonders what's going on. And then um, proceeds to have a conversation with his mother. And she's like, I'm still waiting for mine uh, because she doesn't understand everything either as an adult. 
And um, so then he realizes like when he gets married, now we have two adults that don't know what's going on and then throw in a baby. And now you're responsible for this, this little gift, this little present, and you have no idea what you're doing. But through other adults and, and his parents, you know, in their experiences that they lived out, what they saw, they shared with him to help ease some of these transitions that he was, you know, coming across. So it really made me think about um, my journey into ministry, as many of my brothers and sisters with me here can, um, you know, acknowledge as well, that we tend to get into some of these circles, especially in our classes, where our instructors ask us to share our stories about how we got into ministry. And so you hear some of these wonderful stories and you're like, how is mine not like that? Or how is it not as good to the point when the instructor says, okay, Matt, go ahead and share yours. You want to go, I'm going to pass. Um, but really everybody's story is different and we bear witness to different experiences in our life with Christ. And so it's really that idea of just sharing what we see in our lives, whether it's uh, on a ministry journey or our life in general. It just allows us that opportunity to not be scared to do it, but to, to bear witness to what we've seen. Thank you, Matt, for sharing that with us. It sort of leads us off into seeing the value. Does anyone want to look into the scripture and express, because Matt's saying there's always that sort of comparison and it catches us sometimes. How do we read in the scripture that assurance of value in our story and our voice? Well, I think um, Jesus leads them into it right in the very first verses that we read. Um, they were asking Jesus, is now when you're going to restore the kingdom to Israel? And they were taken aback when Jesus said, nope, it's you. And can you even imagine, like, wait, wait, wait. like with the, the stories of how we came into ministry, you know, sometimes we don't feel like we're as prepared as others are. And just like the disciples are like, well, we're not Jesus. How in the world are we supposed to, mm -hmm. to do this? And, and he, he says, I'm sending the spirit and, and you will. It is your job. You are right. to be the witnesses. Right. Well, and I've always liked, uh, Dr. King has this quote, and I'm going to read it so I don't butcher it. Um, and it is, take the first step in faith. You don't have to see the whole staircase, just take the first step. I think sometimes we get so overwhelmed. Like I think of those disciples. Could you imagine if they knew the whole course of being witnesses to the end of the earth? And I mean, granted, it's amazing to us to look back and see how that has spread Christianity around the world. But can you imagine if they saw the whole path laid out, even though the Holy Spirit was going with them, you know, and their martyrdom in the end. Um, and like, sometimes I think you get overwhelmed if you're looking at the whole big picture, you know, I have to have this awesome story, or I have to, you know, be able to say in great fancy theologian words, you know, the story of Jesus. Right. And really, kind of you just got to lace up your tennis shoes and walk out the door <laughs> and go out in your life and, and share the story of how God is working in your life. I mean, that's the best witness I think of all is how is God at work in your life? How do you see God in the world? I got to imagine one of them at least had to have been thinking pass. <laughs> <laughs> I think what's so great about that about that story is that as soon as Jesus says, no, it's going to be you guys, see ya, and he ascends. <laughs> this mic drop moment of, it's, uh, it's up to you guys and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> out. Jesus is out. And right. um, it's Jesus great because we, we do get to do it. Mm -hmm. and, and, it's, right. it, and that's kind of thing maybe how we need to reframe it. Not that we have to do it. Mm -hmm. Jesus trusts us enough, along with the power of the Holy Spirit, to take this message that he started, this, this mission that he started, mm -hmm. out into the world. And um, 
you know, as I look around my screen right now, there's, there's eight of us around here, and, and we're, we're taking this message uh, into the corners of this state uh, and into the corners of our communities. Um, and we all come from these really unique backgrounds. That's been, what, been, for me, one of the great blessings of this time together is hearing the different experiences of life, of ministry, of parenting, of marriage, all these experiences that collectively are powerful, individually are maybe even more powerful because mm -hmm. the things that we can all speak to in our own context is, is unique and powerful in a way that, you know, if I go up to the UP, I, I can't speak in that context, but Matt can. <laughs> um, okay. And it's, and that's, that's the beauty okay. of, of us as witnesses and there is some baggage, and then maybe we get maybe we get you know get into that a bit when when we talk about being a witness. Mm -hmm. And Curtis, I remember you talked a little bit about, and this is just a, a moment for everybody here that there's power and assurance in the Holy Spirit. That as speaking to Katie, which you said as well too, that we just have to begin with a step. Um, just have to trust the Holy Spirit is going to give us the words to reveal what's on our hearts. You know? And that's going to be a very powerful thing on there. Jackie, hey, I wanted to ask you if you would weigh in on this next part when we're looking at verse 8. Because some of us, if we're not really good at geography, we hear <laughs> in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria. That's not anywhere close to the state of Michigan. It's not? You know, so if people are hearing for this for the first time and engaging with the scripture, what exactly does Jesus mean when he says, way off in a different continent, you'd be my witnesses here? Can you tell us a little bit about how that's speaking to us now here? Yes, exactly. It's, it's speaking to the folks in Down River. It's spoken, speaking to the folks in Hastings. It's speaking to all of us. I mean, where we're at, where we're at and as Curtis said, you know, we're spread out through all over the whole state and it's, you know, you can tag on whatever city, town, village, whatever you want to put on there, but that's who Jesus is talking to. Jesus is talking to us, and and it doesn't matter, you know, how far along we are in the process of being a disciple. We can be brand new. We may not even realize we're being called, but Jesus is still talking to those individuals. And Matt, I had another uh, thought with this. When Jesus gives the idea of, of moving out. He starts with Jerusalem, which they were very comfortable with. Right. They mm -hmm. were their people. And then Judea, which is a little bit more, you know, it's a larger group, but it's still people, their people, their culture that they're used to. And then he says Samaria, right. which were to the Jewish he hearer, um, the, the disciples hearing it were like, hold on. Those are not our people. Right. 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 So, you know, we, we, have, Maybe. we have a long history with Samaritans, and they are the people on the other side of the tracks. Right. right. And right. so I, I think they probably were like, Jerusalem, cool. Judea, cool. Samaria, hold on, Jesus. And then, <laughs> and then all the parts of the world, like, he just puts it out there like, yep, everybody. And so right. I see this as... Um, for us today, this radical inclusion of right. of everyone needs this message of hope and grace and love. It's not just for us to keep to ourselves in our immediate circle, our friends, our closest people. That might be our our sphere of influence that we directly have, but we're called to go beyond that. Right, 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 and. <laughs> Go is the operative word there. You know, it, it's about going somewhere. To, to do what Jesus has asked them to do, they have to leave the place that they're most comfortable and the people that they know, and then they go. They don't stay and wait for people to come to them. And I think that's a, that's a real challenge. It's a real challenge for us as pastors, and it's a real challenge for the people that we interact with in our congregations means your ministry starts when you leave worship on Sunday morning and you go out into your community and do whatever it is you do. Mm -hmm. well, I, remember, I like the simple analogy of like when we're, as we're talking about witnessing is like we see a crime, 
you know, we, we, we basically witnessed to what happened. Right. Why, why do we only do that when bad things happen per se? Why can't we do that in all things in our life, especially as, as believers in Christ? Why can't we share what we see, you know, in front of us, the miracles and the power of prayer and all those things that, that encompass our lives? Why can't we witness that to other people like we do crimes? Mm -hmm. Well, and I think, too, we hear that word witness, and I think it makes people a little scared. Like, oh, no, I have to go out in front of Walmart and pass out Bible tracts and beat people over the head with my Bible. And that's not really what it's saying. Jesus is just go saying, you know, go out. If you, like, if you go to a great movie, like, I only go to Disney movies because currently I have a four-year-old, you know, we're in, like, Disney movie, which here's the secret. That's why I have more kids so I can go to Disney movies. <laughs> but I see a great Disney movie. I tell everybody, Oh my gosh, did you see frozen too? It was so good. <laughs> the music and blah, blah, blah. Well, we must like our church and not just our church, but the church as a whole, because you know, we're there or we're not there right now with coronavirus, but we are the church right. dispersed out in the world. And so why wouldn't we tell somebody about that just like we would tell somebody about a great movie we saw or a good restaurant that, mm -hmm. that we got takeout from because we're not going and sitting there quite yet. <laughs> um, or, you know, a great place that's got toilet paper and Lysol stocked up. You know, we would tell everybody, you know, hey, this great thing. And isn't Jesus in our lives a, that kind of a great thing? Isn't the Holy Spirit at work in our lives that kind of a great thing that we want to share it with people? And it doesn't involve sitting there and quoting scripture to them. Right, right. The and other it, makes it so simple. Yeah, go ahead, Heather. Well, the other piece that it doesn't say, if we're talking about witness, um, it doesn't say that we have to be an expert witness. Right, right. Yeah. You know, when, when you think about, in court and those different type of, we're, we're not called to be the expert. We, it's just, <laughs> we're thing. just a witness. <laughs> yeah. Right. But I think we need to be genuine. I mean, yeah, you know, yes. we need to be real. It needs to be, you know, we can't, it just can't be like some, you know, we want to make it a big mystery story or a big right. suspense story, even a big romance story, you know, it needs to be real how it happened. Right. And, Mm -hmm. And, you know, just even just sharing with people, just be real about it and just, you know, speak their language, speak the, you know, the person's language. And, and that, you know, that opens the door so much, just if you can just speak the language and, you know, like you said, I talked about the places, you know, everybody has their, the UP has their own language. And, you know, <laughs> you, <laughs> <that thing. laughs> well, you know, the the one thing too that, and I hope I'm not jumping the gun in the conversation, but like towards the end of this, this passage, right. the fact that they gather, they gather back together in the upper room. And then the key component to anything we do, at least in my opinion, as Christians, is it says that they pray together constantly. So here are this group of disciples that gather in home, essentially. Granted, I know they're renting the space out or what, but they get together back in the place they're staying, and and they're praying constantly. So they're they're witnessing, you know, together. But it all it all starts with prayer, which is a simple foundation to what all of it starts with. If you're scared, say a prayer, and then witness to what you or share what you see with people, mm -hmm. you know, don't be afraid because lift it to the Lord in prayer. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and from this translation, uh, you know, to piggyback off what you said, Matt, is in this translation in verse 14, it says they all were united. Right. Mm -hmm. They were united in their devote devotion to prayer, including some others that were gathered. Boy, does that not speak to who we are? We're bonded together in prayer and, and you know, find faithful, their strength in that, that faithful prayer. Yeah, good word for that. You know, the red letters often draw our attention to Jesus' words. But, you know, sometimes I wonder if I was making a Bible, right? If I was doing it, I might highlight the angels' presence in a certain type of font. So people are like, oh, oh, angels lighting, angels lighting. <laughs> this is Luke's gospel account. Um, does anyone want to touch on why it's important 
that they were looking after Jesus because he was there with them for so long and revealed, it's me, it's me, it's me. And then he left them, and it sort of took the angels to shake them off. Does anybody want to talk a little bit about uh, Luke's reference to angels here and why that's important for us to hear and know? Well, I think we're, this, it's, it's a nice bookend because Luke's gospel begins with that beautiful story that we share at Christmas and even in the, in the, in the few chapters before of, of the angels coming to announce and coming to bring comfort, coming to, to predict and prophesy what is coming for Israel, that this child is about to come, that this, this new hope is finally coming. And, you know, Luke is often given credit, as he should be, for uh, authoring the book of Acts. And it's almost like a continuation of the book of the Gospel of Luke, mm -hmm. and so it's it's fitting that that Luke <laughs> brings these angels back into it. I mean, the angels were present in the tomb uh, with right. with the women again, announcing that you're right, Matt. Something big is coming. Now we have the gift of hindsight, knowing what's coming. Right? We know that next week when we gather again, that there is something big coming, and mm -hmm. so the the angels just just. They're that, that, that PS on the story that it ain't over. There's something coming. And so hang on. Well, and I think, too, um, this part with the angels is I love the part where they're like, quit looking at heaven. You know what <laughs> Jesus looks like. He's going to look the same when he comes back. <laughs> the, the angels are focusing them forward and outward right. and, you right. know, and I always think of that saying that those people who are so heavenly minded, they're no earthly good, you know, like they're so worried about heaven and getting to heaven that they're not right. focused on the people around them and the world around them. And, you know, those folks in Samaria and Judea and Jerusalem. Um, and, and I kind of love that about the angels. They're like, hey, you guys, pay attention. This is not what you're supposed to be looking at. That's what you're supposed to be looking at. Right. And I think sometimes as the church, we kind of get in that same mindset of it's Sunday, we're feeling great, we're worshiping, we're experiencing this and that, and we forget that there's a lot of work to be done after we leave worship. Right. That there's, there's you know, it's that reminder that Jesus is pointing to us and this is what I need you to do now. Go out there and, and just continue what I've started. Mm -hmm. No, it's, it's very good when we're looking at uh, some of these these aspects of drawing us together uh, here. I've, uh, I'm reminded of a song, and it's interesting because it's by Matthew West. And even though we have Pastor Matt West, they're different people. One's a Hugh, and one just ends at Matt. Um, <laughs> but you might be familiar with the singer-songwriter, and we'll try to get a link in the description. But Matt, you're, you know, there's a song on the radio now that really just talks about the humbleness of it's more about who we're talking about. It's who we're bearing witness for that, that really, you know, is the, the point, not necessarily who it is that's giving it. Can you share a few of those lyrics that kind of drive why we're going to, to make that song available? Well, I, I mean, I think the chorus pretty much, you know, drives it home in the fact that the title of the song is Nobody. And, and what the, the, the message of the song is, is that I'm just a nobody who's trying to tell everybody about somebody who saved my soul. So, I mean, the, the lyrics in the song itself are powerful, but just that, that refrain, that chorus is just powerful enough to say, like, it's that simple. Doesn't matter who you are, if you're a nobody or a somebody, you know, that's, that we're trying to just tell everybody about Christ and, 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 and the power and how it saved our souls. So, I mean, yeah, it's, I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody who saved my soul. Whatever words that, that we have, whatever language we use, just tell them to Jesus be the glory. Uh, Kim, to kind of help us wrap this conversation up, you shared with us uh, a very Wesleyan tie-in to our heritage about the world being my parish. Would you share that story with us to sort of, you know, we opened up with a great word, and this will kind of take us home, I think, with reminding us uh, some of our Wesleyan roots. Sure. Um, so John Wesley, the founder of Methodism and um, the basis of many Wesleyan denominations, his view was that the world is our parish. And he said that often 
in his sermons and just in speaking. And, and in doing that, he is offering us an expansive view of ministry. Like we've mentioned all through this round table or round screen, square screen, um, our, our stories aren't limited to where we are. They're wherever we are. And just as um, we aren't to be stuck thinking that God only shows up inside the church or inside the four walls of whatever box we're trying to stick God into. And John Wesley firmly believed that. And that's what our, uh, our denomination and our, our faith foundation is based on is um, church structures help us to do ministry, but ministry is not confined to those structures, which we had a rude awakening to in these last several weeks is we, we can't depend on our church buildings for our ministries. They have to be through our stories and we all have a story to share and we are all called to view the world as our parish. And so away we must go as Andrea noted. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Good word today. So, we, the people in the church, um, their witness, their spirit are more powerful than the structures themselves because it's the people that make the church, not the location. Amen yep. for that. Well, thank you all for your discussion, and we'll move on now to further our worship. Church, as we, because we are all the church, everybody watching this or listening to this, um, we are the church, and it is through prayer that we gather together. So even though we are all in our separate places, Let's go to the Lord together in prayer. Lord, we acknowledge that you are everywhere. You are in every house, every cell phone, every computer, everywhere we are, you are there. And sometimes we forget that, Lord. We, could, we forget that you are over it all, that sometimes we try to do it ourselves. Or we think that our stories aren't good enough. So, Lord, we're here to confess that now, that, that we have fallen short. But we know that you will lift us back up. You have sent the Holy Spirit to help us. And we thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for all of our many blessings. We thank you for the houses we're able to shelter in, our abodes, whatever they might be, wherever we might be. And we also come to you with concerns, Lord. We have flooding, especially here in Michigan and specifically in the Midland area. Lord, we just ask for your grace and strength for those that are caught up in that and that they will be able to recover. Lord, for those that are hurting, we ask for your healing. For those that are mentally ill, Lord, we ask for your soothing calm. For those that have had surgery or going into surgery, Lord, we ask that you are with the medical personnel. And we, we lift up those that are on the front lines, Lord, during all of this. And that's not just the, the doctors and the nurses, but the cleaning personnel and the cafeteria workers and, and the, the first responders and the retail Everybody, Lord, we are all struggling, and we just ask for your grace and calm. And Lord, as, as Katie noted, we, we just pray that we aren't so focused on heaven that we're no good here on earth. Help us as we bring your kingdom here to earth and bring others along with us. And Lord, so many years ago, you gave us a prayer to pray. And it is a way that people were gathered together then, and over 2,000 years later, we are still gathering together to pray those words. So if you know them, I pray that you will pray them along with me as we pray to God together the way we were taught to pray. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. 
Amen. benediction. May you go out into the world and in your words and in your lives bear witness to Christ who ascended to be everywhere present. And as you come to know him, may God give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation. May Christ Jesus lift up his hands and bless you. And may spirit be open to you all the riches of Christ's inheritance. We go in peace and love to serve the Lord. Amen.